Good morning class. This morning we are going to discuss chapter 2. Now, to refresh your memory, in the first video, I told you that there are four elements of a valid obligation and that is passive subject, number two you have the active subject, number three you have the object, and number four you have the juridical tie. Now chapter two basically deals with the third na, and that is object. Uh, medyo mahaba ang discussion sa chapter 2. Puputuli natin ito sa mga tatlong, tatlong video. Na? This is the first of the three parts. Now, uh, chapter 2 focuses on object. Na? Object of the obligation. Now, it is very important that you should know the distinction between a determinate and an indeterminate object. Why? Because in case of loss, improvement, or deterioration of a thing, you have to ascertain whether it is determinate or indeterminate because different rules apply. Now, you say that the object is determinate if the genus and the species is indicated. Huh? Like let us say, my tag hoyer watch with serial number blah blah blah. Huh? Specific yan because the genus is and the species is indicated. But when you say only the watch, no, my watch, no, my watch, that is determinate. So indeterminate rather. So when you say uh, tag hoyer watch with serial number blah blah blah, no, that is determinate. And when you say the watch, no, that is indeterminate. So very important, no, that you should know the distinction between determinate and indeterminate because different rules apply in case of loss, in case of deterioration, or in case of the improvement of these things, no. Uh, we will discuss the rules maybe in the next video, no? but suffice it to say that you should know the distinction between a determinate and an indeterminate object. Second, if you are obliged to deliver, you have to deliver the thing in the diligence of a good father of the family. What is diligence of good father of the family mean? No? It means that you have to take care of the thing uh, in a diligence, no? ordinary diligence. Therefore, if let's like, say I am obliged to deliver a horse, no, a horse, what is the appropriate due diligence uh, taking care of the horse pending delivery? Papakainin mo, paggabi, ipapasok mo sa stable. No? So, diligence of a good father of the family presupposes ordinary diligence. This is the diligence expected uh, for the passive subject, no? for the passive subject pending delivery to the active subject. So, it's ordinary diligence. Diligence of a good father of the family. Now, if you are tasked to deliver also, no? deliver a thing, uh, delivery completes the obligation. No? Delivery completes the obligation. So, let us say you promise to deliver a horse. Once you deliver the horse, the obligation is completed. No? There are two modes of delivery. One, you have actual delivery. And the second mode is the constructive delivery. So, actual delivery, kukunin mo isang bagay, ililipat mo sa kanya. No? That is actual delivery. The second mode is constructive delivery. So, second mode of constructive delivery, there are four kinds. No? Number one, you have traditio symbolica. By the way, when you say traditio, it's tradition delivery. No? Traditio symbolica, you have traditio breve mano, you have traditio longa mano, and you have the constitutum possessorium. Okay, when you say traditio symbolica, this is the symbolic delivery of a thing. No? Like let us say, you want to deliver a car, you deliver the key, and you sign the deed of sale. No? That is a symbolic delivery that you are transferring the ownership of the car to the active subject. Okay, second point. No? That is traditional longa mano. Traditional longa mano is long hand delivery. No? Like let us say, pointing on the area that you are going to sell, you say that that is the area that I am selling to you from that point to this point. No? From, from the point of the first coconut tree up to the last point of the mango tree. That is Tradisio Longa Mano. Then you have Tradisio Breve Mano. Now what is Tradisio Breve Mano? Tradisio Breve Mano is shorthand delivery. Meaning, there is no more need for you to deliver the thing because it is already in the possession of the active subject. Example, na. May isang bahay ka na pinaparentahan mo sa kanya. Eventually, binili niya. Is there a need for you to deliver the house to her, to the, to the active subject? No need because she is already residing in that house. She is already staying in that house. Therefore, the, she has the possession of that house already. Okay. Opposite of tradition breve mano is the constitutum possessorium. 
In constitutum possessorium, uh, there is no more need to deliver because the object remains in the possession of the passive subject. Na? Yung kanina, sa tradisyo breve mano, the object is in the possession of the active subject already. Like let us say, nagarenta siya sa bahay mo, tapos eventually binili niya, there is no more need for you to deliver the house kasi dun na siya nakatira. Dito sa pangalawa, which is constitutum possessorium, it's the opposite. Na? May bahay ka, ikaw ang may-ari, ibinenta mo sa active subject. Na? Kaya lang, uh, hindi mo pwedeng i-deliver because you continued you continue to be in possession of the house no longer as an owner but this time as a lessee so these are the modes of delivery delivery perfects or completes the obligation again two modes of delivery you have constructive delivery and you have the actual delivery for constructive delivery you have four types you have first the uh, tradition symbolica Number two, you have the tradisio breve mano. And number three, you have the tradisio longa mano. And number four, you have the constitutum possessorium. Now, when you deliver, na, uh, you obligated yourself to deliver a thing. Na, then you deliver it. Na. Pag deliver mo, ano ang kailangan isasali mo sa delivery? You have to deliver the fruits of the thing. Na. Pending delivery. Kasi nag-promise ka, let's say 2019, 2020 mo diniliver. And the thing is fruit producing. Na? There are three types of fruits. First, you have the industrial fruit. Number two, you have the civil fruit. And number three, you have the natural fruit. Okay, let us discuss first the industrial fruit. Na? These are product of tealing, na? product of industry. Like let us say, uh, nagtanim ka ng mangga. Na? Nagtanim, ini-expect mo na mamunga. Hindi yan mamunga kung hindi mo itinanim ang mangga. So that is an industrial fruit. Okay? So there is human intervention. Natural fruit yung pinabayaan mo lang siya. Na pinabayaan mo lang siya, nagkaroon ng fruit o nanganak siya, na nanganak siya. And number 3 you have the civil fruit. Ang civil fruit siya class, ito yung rental, na rental ng property na uh, inobligate mong i-deliver sa active subject. Okay? So three types of fruits, you have the industrial fruit, you have the natural fruit and you have the civil fruit. If you are obliged to deliver, na, you promise to deliver a thing, you will deliver that thing na, because it is a juridical necessity that you deliver. There are two major types of delivery. The second part is divided far farther into four. You are obliged to deliver the fruits, na, the fruits of the thing. There are three types of fruits, three kinds of fruits that may be delivered, industrial, civil, and natural. Okay, now... When you deliver also, it is very important that you deliver also the accessions and the accessories. What is the difference between accessions and accessory? Ang accessory is intended for embellishment. Pang maganda, no? like let us say, earrings, that is an accessory. No? Pag when you say accession, these are the things which are necessary in order to put the object in proper function. Like let us say, the key to a car, that is an accessory. Okay? You promise to deliver a thing. No? You promise to deliver a thing. You have to determine whether that thing is uh, determinate or indeterminate. Basically because different rules apply in case of loss, deterioration, or improvement of the thing. No? Depending on determinate or indeterminate siya. Then you have to deliver two types of delivery, constructive and actual. No? For constructive delivery, you could always, it's either tradisio longa mano, tradisio breve mano, tradisio symbolica, or constitutum possessorium. No? Constitutum possessorium. When you deliver a thing, you are obliged to deliver the fruits, the accessions, and the accessories. Now, we will, today, before we will end the video, we will study one principle in obligation class. Obligation necessitates demand. No? Standard is the rule under Article 1169 that there is when there is no demand, there is no delay. So there is a need for you to make a demand in order for the passive subject, no passive subject to comply with his obligation. Again, standard is the rule that there is no demand when there is no demand, there is no delay. But there are exceptions to this rule, no? The first exception is that when the law states so. Okay? So pag sinabi ng law na ngayon ang deadline, Deadline talaga yan, even if the government will not make, you will not uh, send you a demand letter. Like let's say the obligation, the, the obligation to pay our annual income tax. That's April 15. No, that is an obligation to pay your tax even if there is no demand. Because uh, if you delay, of course, penalties and surcharges would surcharges would ensue. 
So, when the law states so, number one. Number two is when time is of essence. Like, let us say, nagkontrata ka na mag-deliver ng birthday cake. Na? Tapos, kahit na hindi mo sabihin na, Uy, birthday ko na ba yung bukas, kailangan mo nang i-deliver. The fact that you have informed the baker that today is your birthday, kailan niya dapat i-deliver ang birthday cake? On that on the day of your birthday. Tomorrow, it would be uh, delayed. No? May delay na even if there is no demand. The third, uh, the third exception is when, when demand would be useless. As when the thing perish already. No? You promised to deliver a horse next week. The horse died. No? The horse died. So, useless na na i-deliver mo. Even if walang demand, you have incurred delay. Always, it would matter whether the, thing, the object is determinate or indeterminate. Always remember these points if you want a more ex uh, expound, uh, expound explanation, a more thorough explanation, you read your book and you look at your lecture notes. We will proceed to the third video.